Awaken the Rebel. I'm your host, Sharini Thor, and today we have a gnarly good treat for you. So I'm going to try to compose myself. I literally just did a take and then cut because I was like, bro, I can't even put together sentences. I'm so excited. I need to calm down. All right. So today we have Mr. Kevin Hansford, aka Denzel. Hello. Thank you for Hello. being with us. Thank you. I don't even know how to let you guys know who he is. Like, he's just one of my favorite rebels. He is one of, like, the early on rebels, too. Like, my God, he found me before I was even married with children. Like, you know, this is like a chapter in the rebel movement that is <laughs> sacred. So, Kevin, why don't you tell us really fast, how did you find Awaken the Rebel? Awesome. First of all, I want to say, what's up? my people okay your people let's listen to this podcast listen so you know lately a lot of uh people see social media as like the devil like oh my god i gotta get away from social media but a couple of years ago i was actually on twitter and just doing my little thing you know trying to soak up some some good exposure to dating coaches and i stumbled upon you and i don't know if i could say shit but shit it just took off from there you know, I saw the tweets that you had. I followed the hashtag Awaken the Rebel. And every time I would see a tweet, I'm just like, who is this lady? <laughs> and how can I meet her so I can learn some shit? Because I was just at that point in life where I wanted more exposure to real. I wanted to be around people who were going to spit back to me the real. Not like the cookie cutter, not like the procedural, but just like, hey, listen, dude, this is where you are. You're fucking awesome. You're fucking real. Take that and go do you. And I needed that. And so when I saw the tweets, the tweets are enough to just spark that awakening in myself. So good, dude. I'm so happy about whoever founded Twitter and brought us together. <laughs> Absolutely. Seriously, it's crazy. Like being, you know, being a coach, being the founder of Awaken the Rebel, blah, 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 blah. It's just funny how like it really, to me, like the soul of the movement is like people like you. Like, the people that I'm interviewing on this podcast, like some of them are going to be gurus and some of them are going to be homies and some of them are going to be past clients. And like more than anything, like I just feel like in a lot of ways, my connection with you has really breathed life into the movement. So it's like really exciting to me to have you on today because you, Kevin, are such a good success story. Like there's lots of success stories, but I'm like, this dude is like, gonna surpass me no doubt and i'm happy about it like i love this man all right so just to give you guys a little bit of detail about how banging this boy is <sighs> he lives up to the name aka denzel he is the <laughs> he is the founder of bold without apology coaching and they really do first of all amazing videos so go ahead and check them out like find them google bold without apology and find them and find their videos because their shit is awesome like with kevin one thing i love about him and we were talking about this before we re started recording is like you're not gonna get a fakey fakey guru who's gonna like shove a bunch of information down your throat and like pretend he knows better than you he is just gonna bring it raw like yes. us having a conversation a podcast whatever is gonna be us getting motherfucking real yeah. so now maybe you guys will understand why I like him so much because that's my favorite <laughs> thing to do. So yeah, so Kevin, why don't you like give us a little picture like for the people who don't know who you are, who have like okay. no contact with you whatsoever. One, let's just start with like, what exactly do you do? Okay, well, I like to say on the videos that I'm the voice of Bold Without Apology. Bold Without Apology from that point I was in life when I needed the coaching or wanted the coaching. I was ready for the coaching and I found you you know, when you would talk about awaken the rebel and you would always ask me, like, what is it inside of you? What is that inside of you? And for me, that's what that was. Just that boldness to say, man, I'm a dude. I've been through some shit in life. I love relationships, but I mess them up every now and again. <laughs> and I just really want to learn how to be a better dude. And that just came out in being bold, saying, hey, I've made mistakes. Hey, I'm real. Hey, I'm just a dude and I want to love. And that's what that is now. If somebody's listening to this and they don't know me and they hear, okay, this Kevin guy, Denzel, he's awesome. I want the first thing that comes across their mind and say he's a regular guy who just wants to connect. I mean, hell, don't we all? When we have a need for connection, <laughs> that's what it is. So that's who I am. And the thing I want people to take away from this the most when they hear this is, fuck, Shireen is able to galvanize so many people 
who all have different areas that they're legit in, but it all boils down to that fucking connection with being you. Mm. So that's what I'm saying right now, damn it. Damn. Preach! I don't know where that came from. It was, it was so good. good. It was so good. So, all right. So for those of you who are listening, boldwithoutapology.com is where you can find Kevin. He does coaching mostly around relationships and dating, but he also does life, love, and everything in between. Is that right, yeah. Kevin? Absolutely. Because I also want people to understand that, okay, so you maybe you want to start a business, but if you boil that down, that's going to boil down to how well you can navigate relationships. Maybe you want a marriage or maybe you want to be better at dating. That, if you boil that down... It's going to open up to you. How well are you able to have the relationship with yourself? You know, everything that we try to master and we move towards, it ultimately revolves around understanding and acceptance of relationships. That's why I'm such a proponent of relationships. It's so good and it's so wise and it's so necessary. And I feel like, like you said, like the subtext to creating a successful business is how well can you navigate relationships? And let's be honest, if you have a successful business and you don't have a successful relationship, you're probably not going to be that fulfilled anyway, you know? No, not at all. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. So I want to hear this. Like right now, you are the founder and the voice of Bo Without Apology, which to me is like the culmination of your work with Awaken the Rebel. Like you came to me, mm. you were like, I'm a cop. I want out. I want to be a coach. Like that was like our initial start point. So mm-hmm. I want to hear your story from that start point to where you are now. Like what happened? What things had to like change within you or what realizations did you need to have to get to a point where you were ready to like, boom, BWA, bitches. Oh, my God. That's a good podcast question. God. OK, I love that. OK, so, you know, I'm struggling to see where to start with that because it's so much. It was so much, you know, being a cop and not being fulfilled in that. A lot of people see that as either a heroic position in life or a somewhat controversial thing to do. Me, I was just a dude that was trying to help. But I started to feel disconnected from it. While that disconnection was happening, also looking inside myself and feeling that disconnection. And I mean, in my love life, to be honest. So that's kind of where I started it. It's just having the want. I mean, everybody has that want for something and they just don't know how to move forward or, you know, they're just that's that beginning point for me. And as it transitioned, it went from, hey, I'm a cop and I want to have better relationships. And then I would see people like you. I would see the opportunities that you present. Do you know, I still talk about my first freaking seminar was the one that you had in L.A. I think it was 2012 or 2013, one of the two. And I wasn't supposed to sit in the front row. It was reserved. And I just fucking sat there. I was like, you know what? (laughs) Well, first time in L.A., I'm just going to sit up here. I deserve to be here. And you walked down the aisle and you saw me. And we had corresponded online a few times. But you were just kind of like, oh, you must be Kevin. And then you were like, oh, he sat in the front. Okay, cool. (laughs) The energy that you gave back to me at that point. I never had, I never got that kind of free flowing, just like, hey dude, I don't really know you, but you're cool. We believe in the same things. Hey, just rock with us. And coming from a place where I wanted to have better relationships, that fucking spoke to me. Mm. It spoke to my heart. You know, that reflected back to me like, I crave this. I want to absorb myself in this just completely. You know, being a cop, you know, think about cops now. You don't really hear of a lovey-dovey cop unless it's some <laughs> bullshit CNN thing where they're trying to, like, you know, put some propaganda out. No, I fucking wanted love. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to connect. So at that point in my journey, being able to be exposed to what you provided and then hearing the term awaken the rebel is not just a fucking cute phrase. You know, it's not just a hashtag. Every time I would hear it, every time I would see it, I saved the folder that I got from that seminar because on the top it said awaken the rebel. And I would look at that when I was at my apartment back in Texas. And I said, you know what? This is what I'm doing. Like, this is it. It's fucking scary. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how this is going to look. I'm supposed to be a cop, but I want to be a life coach. I want to be a relationship coach. Right. Like, what the fuck? Um, (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But, you know, that message, Awaken the Rebel, really just spoke to me that this, that craving that I had to put myself in a better position. As that transition, the more I chose to be myself, the more came back to me, you know, I would not have the finances or I told myself I didn't have the finances for your coaching. And then I would just do it anyways. 
and shit started moving. Uh, growth started happening. And that's just a trend of my journey from where it was to now was I was scared. I didn't know. I chose to do it anyways. I didn't apologize for it. And shit came back to me. So that's just been the common trend from being a cop, wanting relationships to becoming a relationship coach. And then now where I am is having a business. Fucking about to get engaged. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get engaged. That's that's the most beautiful things, because, you know, I came to you and I had all these questions about being connected and understanding clients. But the more I asked you stuff about business, the more I got back as an understanding about relationships. I even remember some story you told me your first date with Kenny. <laughs> and, OK, let me set the tone. OK, so you're riding and he's playing Eminem in the car and you fucking love Eminem. And you were like, oh, my God. OK, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so at one point you guys were walking and he brushes up against you and you're like fuck i think this dude is legit yeah and that story you told me that on a retreat we had at first i was like okay that's bullshit man like they don't really happen like they don't happen for everybody this is bullshit that's lucky for her <laughs> bastard <laughs> <laughs> but i shit you not the realness that I see with you and Kenny, the growth, the, the human aspect to being an entrepreneur that I saw that you had with Kenny and your baby girl, that fucking woke me up more. Mm. That, that awoke a different rebel in me to say, I'm not fucking scared of relationships anymore. Yeah. So that's how I ended up here. Damn, dude. It's so exciting. My God, Kevin, it's so exciting to have seen the evolution of you. Like... Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Really? Like, that's one of the main reasons I was like, I gotta have Kevin, man. Like, you're such a testament to what can happen in somebody's life when they acknowledge not being fully fulfilled in their career and their relationships, which were my two pain points at my start point for sure. Mm. And they make a different choice. They go to a seminar, which is exactly what was the change for me too. And from there, it opens a journey. It just All opens right. a journey of being bold without apology, awakening the rebel where you just put one foot in front of the other. You just mm -hmm. trust these weird impulses or desires you have. You don't know where the right. F you're going. You just trust. Yeah. And you're able to, as we've talked about many times, live in the gray. Live in the gray. <laughs> if, if there's any future client listening to this right now, you better start living in the gray, damn it, because <laughs> it'll change your exactly, life. Exactly, right? Like, instead of things needing to be black or white or make sense or right. not make sense, it's like you get to be in the discomfort and the uncertainty of the gray, trusting that your soul wouldn't stray you, you know, or wouldn't, like, lead you astray, because that's the right way to say it. And then your fucking life opens up. Like, that's what I feel with you, is I'm like, dude, Kevin has went from a closed rosebud to a gorgeous <laughs> flower <laughs> right in front of my eyes. Like, forgive me for being this weird, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I just have seen you flourish, like in the area of being a disgruntled cop to branding yeah. your own badass movement that is an expression of your soul that empowers other people, empowers you, empowers your team. And now to having a fulfilling, healthy, grounded, grown ass relationship that yes. is blossoming into a lifelong. It's amazing. Like this is literally like you are every coach's dream. Hey, shout <laughs> out. <laughs> well, you know, I, again, I have to say, you know, I'm not trying to be too showery with affection, but I got to say it was you. It was the moment we were having that coaching session and you say, you know, I'm trying to do my, my Shereen voice. <laughs> Listen, honey. Don't get me wrong. I hear you, but I need you to be in the gray. And I pause for a second. I'm like, what does that mean? And you're like, listen, fuck it. OK, you don't have to be in the dark. You don't have to be in the black. It, everything doesn't have to be cookie cutter, clear, straight to the point. Be in the fucking gray. And when you said that, it really sunk in that for me, my defense mechanism was to either shut something completely out, be in the dark. Or I needed every answer lined up. I needed to be in the light, in the white. I needed everything before I made a move. And for me, what being in the gray was, I won't hide myself from everything. There are some things that I'm going to hold on to as I move forward, and that's okay. And there are sometimes going to be points where I can't see my foot in front of me. I can't see the answers, but I'm still going to move forward. What comes of that, 
I'm going to take that and fucking grow. That's what being in the gray was for me. Oh, my goodness. Preach! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kevin, taking us to church. It's so good. All right. So if you just were like, let's say hypothetically, you were speaking at Awaken the Rebel Live right now and the podcast sure. listeners were your audience, what would you feel inspired to share to support them on their journey? I would say, listen, my people, because for every bit of me becoming a coach, I'm still a student and I'm envisioning I'm talking to him. as we stand here now. I want you to understand this one thing. Relationships. First, start with yourself. OK, now that's the scariest part of it, because there's some monsters, some gremlins that we got running around in our mind. And the little fuckers don't come up until night when we're trying to go to sleep and they're just going and running amok. Don't be scared of them. Feed them a little bit. Acknowledge your fears. It's there for a reason. Because you're human. You're fucking real. And the shit that you experience and the mistakes you made don't change the fact that you're not human. Humanize your mistakes and accept the fact that you're on a journey. So start with yourself. From there, understand what you deserve, boo. I'm going to say it again. Understand what you deserve. Because a lot of us think because we fucked up along the way or we made a bad decision that we're not deserving of what's out there for us. And we do fucking deserve it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Marion Wilson quote, you know, some of us dim our light because others are afraid to shine. And when we get in that transition from knowing what we want to connecting with other people, we apologize because we want a better relationship or we apologize because we're homebodies and we don't go to the bar or we apologize for so much shit and no, stop apologizing and just fucking love what you want. So if that means you were ready to get married, but you haven't found a person and you want that kind of connection. Breathe in. Mm. And then from there, the last thing I want people to understand about relationships is just let it fucking be. There are going to be times when we don't have the answers. We really don't fucking know. And sometimes instead of running to get the answer or moving past that, just sit with it. And as Shereen would say, be in the gray. Oh, that was juicy, Kevin. <laughs> so you got me thinking I'm on the stage with the people. I just want them to have a little hush, hush, oh my God moment. Oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> That's like my favorite Kevin <laughs> imitating a female voice. Now, it will be other things, but that, that'd be like, you know, I, because I do coach people and I do seminars on like dating. Infuse a lot of humor because I coach from a place of pain. And sometimes it's natural for me to laugh at my pain because it's easy for me to share that in doses. Right. You know, so when people are going through like, you know, a shitty date or she won't text you back, brother. I've been there. <laughs> but those things I just shared are the tenets of what I believe. Yeah. I really particularly love, obviously I love it all, but I love that idea of like not moving through or past or shoving away the discomfort that there is something powerful in just acknowledging your fear and like, you know, just sitting with it, being there. So like, Tell me, Kevin, why is that better? Because it's natural for us as humans to want to avoid pain, right? Like we're like, let's shove that away or let's like be too busy to acknowledge or whatever. So let's say hypothetically, the listeners are like, that dude sounded wise. I'm going to take his advice. And they actually sit with it. What do they get out of that? Man, you know, I try not to be so preacher. But you, what you get from that is the process. And you get to the point to where you don't rush the process. You can trust what the process is giving you. You know, it fucking takes 21 years to be 21 years old. Sometimes it fucking takes that pain to understand what it really means to be connected to somebody. Because a lot of times I was in relationships thinking that, well, we have to be happy to be healthy. No, fuck that. Scratch that. We have to be able to communicate, understand conflict and navigate through that to be healthy. So when you sit with conflict, then you're able to understand what it actually means. You know, if somebody's disappointed or unhappy in a relationship doesn't mean the end of the relationship. It might mean, hey, this is a point where we need to sit with this and understand more. A lot of times conflict shows up to let us know as a warning sign, like, hey, this is what's up on. This is what's on the table. But so many of us scrap that because we have been conditioned to think that conflict means, fuck, I got to get the fuck out of here. 
So if we develop that habit of running from conflict, we will never get to that next level of understanding a relationship. So when I say sit with it, all I'm saying is sit in that difficulty and start to navigate it so you can see what it's going to give you on the other side. My God, that is really good advice. Like really, really good advice. I will say like even being married, like Kenny and I are now coming up on our little three year anniversary. We big time. We big time. Yo. Thank you. And I think like in my marriage that has made the biggest difference is like being in the discomfort of conflict and not rushing past it or like shoving it away or like making him be quiet or him making me be quiet. It's like, okay, something's trying to come up right now. We don't get it. And we're kind of irritated at each other when it's happening. (laughs) But man, we just like, and this is totally personal development. This is me just geeking out, like sharing now there's, like a personal development philosophy I learned early on when I was just working on the first part, which you made a great point of saying like the first relationship is with yourself. So there was this idea of like, are you living life? Are you playing the game of life? Like lose, lose, or are you playing the game of life? Like win, lose, or are you playing the game of life? Like win, win, or are you playing just to play like careless? And like we would literally score ourselves. And then we would like show up in one of the four quadrants. And at the time, I think I was playing just to play. Like I was just real flipping about things. like Whatever. Anyway, fast forward. Here we are over a decade later, you know, I've already like fulfilled my, like, I know what I'm passionate about. I started awakening the rebel. I got married. I had a kid, whatever with my relationship with Kenny. And I realized, man, we've been playing win lose for a couple years. Wow. Right? Like, it was just like, okay. So now we have all these conversations. We, like, you're talking about, we slowed it down. We don't rush and go to, like, default what's normal. We literally go, is this a win win? Like, we literally just have these conversations where we're like, right. well, hold on. Do you feel like this is a win win? And, like, it's literally revolutionized our entire relationship. Like, our shit has gotten so much more happy, balanced, healthy peaceful loving like i just even feel the flow of energy between us my god it's like so much better because we're not just like okay yeah cool sounds good let's just get back to what we were used to doing i feel like now we're like oh we're married like we gotta be different about the way we do things so we're like let's discuss this a little longer you know it's just anyway so that is amazing advice thank you for preaching honey do not apologize (laughs) (laughs) oh you're right bold without apology that's right i love hearing that because you so many what is this acres of diamonds i listen to this audio acres of diamonds and there's always something to discover in the backyard so what you're saying i'm discovering diamonds in this conversation because you said something about communication having the difficult conversation i think most of us have conditioned ourselves to maybe turn that conversation down with ourselves. Like we know it, like we want to say something like, I don't like the way you made me feel, or I'm kind of disrespected right now that you're texting so-and-so or, Hey, how cool are you and that girl? Because I'm not really comfortable with how she's touching on you. You know, those things come up naturally. We're fucking human, but we'll think something and we'll turn it down instead of finding a fucking way to just create that common ground with your significant other that, Hey, when stuff comes up for me, I want to be able to talk about it. I think I trust you is bigger than I love you for me. Because when I can trust you, I can have those conversations. I can say, hey, babe, you know, your coworker, Adam, I don't really like the way he goes back and forth with you. But that's coming from me. That's something inside of me. And I wanted to be able to share that with you so you can see where I am. That's going to make your significant other instantly feel something. Maybe feel like, whoa, but then they can say, okay, I hear you. I didn't know you felt like that. You know, while we're sitting with this, I guess that makes me feel like you don't trust. And then and now we can talk. We can sit with that. People, you know, swallow it, shut it down and just pretend. Let's get back to the happiness. Oh, fuck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the rug will be pulled out at one point or another. Yes, <sighs> so true. It's so true. And I think something you said was actually really poignant or like the way you presented the communication was you said, I don't like the way you and your coworker go back and forth, but that's just me. So there's like a responsibility in the way you're communicating. Oh my God, yes. Yes. Like you're not saying, why are you talking to him like that? Or like, right. you're not like a blaming, attacking, accusing, nothing. You're just saying- oh. 
this is how I'm feeling right now. Fucking yes, responsibility. Being able to be responsible for my feelings. Because at the end of the day, it's my fucking feelings. Yeah. I like to say the feelings are the surface level to the soul. So when you peel back those feelings through that conversation, you can get at a soul level and then connect with each other. Motherfucker, I'm about to start taking notes, okay? (laughs) (laughs) I am not kidding. I will write that down. Feelings are the surface level to the soul. That was a genius. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. We don't play life coaching. We don't play dating coaching. We do it. Seriously, Kevin, it's so fun to hear you. Like, really. Like, my god it's just so neat like and this is why i needed you on the podcast i was like first of all he's doing his thing so like we just gotta like share how like amazing this that's like come to the service second of all i need this dude to let people know coaching with awaken the rebel works oh my god <laughs> hey listen hey 2012 i was a dude that did have shit together in 2017 i'm a man who is understanding that sometimes when shit ain't together I'm still moving forward. Yes. Oh my God. So good. Feelings are the surface level to the soul. Seriously. (laughs) I'll take that one to the bank. Yo, (laughs) you are my new guru. I know you said you're just getting raw, but I beg to differ. Mr. Wise. All right. All right. All right. So we're having fun here and obviously we're just jamming at this point, but I want to know, What's next for you and BWA? What's your guys' next step, next move, all that good stuff? I guess I could tell it because I enjoy sharing. You know, a lot of people use content as a way to get sales or like a very forward moving marketing thing. For me, content is a way to document like this is what I'm going through. I like to let people look into, hey, we just started a business. Hey, this is what it looks like when you get an LLC. This is what it looks like when you fucking charge $60 because these bitches won't pay $150 for a a coach. You know, this is what it looks like when you get a client who fucking wants it. You know, I like to show these different stages. Yeah. So I don't have no problem sharing this next couple of things. We got a lot of projects that are coming up that are more creative. I have an ear for music and an eye for video. And so my team has been really hungry to tap into that. And like share videos that are really creative and fun, but also something people can watch like a mini movie, a mini series on YouTube. We're going to do stuff on dating from the man's perspective and the female's perspective. I've got a mixtape that's going to come out. So when I say mixtape, I love music. I fucking love music. Uh. So what's going to happen is you're going to hear your boy not just doing motivational stuff, but a wide array of musical and audio development all right from life love and everything in between that's going to be coming out this year and we also have of course the weekly videos every wednesday myself my crew bwa experience real life coaching from real conversations with real people don't forget about that and we are also going to be creating a podcast So if they like the, you know, little skeet taste of what I'm saying, they can get that every other week starting a couple months from now. Oh, I love that so much. So Mm -hmm. what I'm hearing is that you guys are taking a very like creative energy around BWA. It's like creative plus personal development or empowerment or whatever. So the ability to create. It's so natural to us. Like when we're kids, all we're wanting to do is to create. And we're told, sit down, color in the lines, don't eat that, do all this other stuff that's regimented. But that want to create, it's always there. And so I'm learning and understanding the business side now. Like we got to make some sales. Okay. Right. right. We got to. You are, you're in business. But why not just be creative with it? Why not do like have fun? Have fucking fun. Like, make it something you want to do. If I look at a video and I don't fucking like it, then don't put the video up. Because I want to be able to say, and this is at the end of the day, I think about legacy. You know, I think about, okay, while I was here uh, and I realized who I wanted to be, what did I do with that? Did I try to be like everybody else? Or did I leave my fucking fingerprint yeah. on YouTube? Did I leave my fingerprint on Facebook posts? You know, did I leave my fingerprint so people can say, damn, that was bold without apology? 
And so when it comes to that, I'm going to be creative. We're going to put some music in it, some laughs, some oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to take that and do what we're doing and have fun. So that's that. I love that so much because I feel like when you found me, I was actually more in my like straight personal development seminar, Tony Robbins vibe, you know? And then at the end of 2016, I was like, no, man. I got to bring my comedian back. I got to get back. That's when I really realized I got to do this podcast because like I love hosting. It's like my favorite thing, but I don't want to talk about stupid stuff. I want to talk about what matters. I want to be a jerk off about it and I want to cuss and have some fun. But (laughs) yeah, I can say bitch on here and nobody's like, oh my God. There will be an explicit E and you will be in the clear. Yes. (laughs) But I do honestly want to tell you that I've gotten to that point of being okay with that from studying you. I don't know how weird that sounds, but you know, I remember when I first started following you, you talked a little bit about being a comedian and I was like, what? So I, you know, me being on YouTube, I found like clips of you doing stand up, and I'm like her delivery. It's like the way you utilize a pause, the way you flow through, you know, the audience slabs, the way you're able to paint a story. I'm just like, if I can take that, and take my rawness and experience and just be myself and present that. Fuck, that's connection. So I definitely enjoy being able to see people like you, hear people like you do what you do and say, man, it's okay to be Kev, laugh yeah. a little bit or use comedy because we all have it to be able to move forward your message. Yeah. Good job, man. You're killing it. I can't even say like, I mean, right now, like we were talking about, like I'm literally on bed rest with my second child. I told all my clients I got to go. You know, we got, <laughs> and I'm just doing like podcast hosting. I'm literally straight chilling. I'm, I don't even care about social media. I'm just in a weird phase, you know, but like and I watch you and I'm like, ooh, he is killing it. Like, <laughs> ooh, it's like, it's so fun to see you be yourself and have fun and be silly and be in your face and real and raw and challenge people and speak truth but still like doing it with your swagger, you know, like, oh my God, it's like, it's the best. I literally, I'm like, Kevin is literally my new guru. Like it's, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Hugs and bugs from Texas, hugs and bugs. (sighs) It's so important that you have a coach who really sees you. Sees you, yeah. Yeah, because oftentimes like we don't see ourselves. Like we just see who our mom told us we were or who, or, you know, we got bullied or, you know, like we have our little weird shit we're moving through. We have our little limitations. When you have a coach, they see you bigger than you see yourself and then they can pull you into that vision much more quickly, much more effectively because they don't, they weren't bullied. They aren't, you know, they aren't tripping on all that shit you're tripping on. So <laughs> I don't want people to get too attached to the idea of it always having to be me because tr- right. exactly because truly they would be robbing themselves. So like, I want people to get the philosophy, the message, the empowerment that Awaken the Rebel brings. That's indicative of where I am now with BWA. You know, I don't want people to think that's just me. It's a crew of people. And in each area that they mastered, you can go to them under this thing that we call Bowls Without Apology. So I totally hear you. Love that. All right. So first off, I just want to say thank you for jamming with me. Like, you're too much fun. I'm so excited about you. I know that everyone who's listening to this podcast right now is clearly going to be a fan. And go check out your website. <laughs> BowlWithoutApology.com. Don't you forget it. <laughs> and, you know, do you have any parting words before we sign off? Mm, you know, you were born a winner. You were fucking born a winner. I think along the way, we start to allow things in this world or expectations from other people or our fears to teach us how to lose. So just remind yourself when you wake up after you've wrestled with those little gremlins and, you know, your fears that I'm bold without apology. I'm not perfect. I'm not the best at times, but I am willing to step into that and grow. So good. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. To all my people, my little rebels out there, definitely check out Kevin at bullwithoutapology.com. And for this interview, I will say you're welcome because (laughs) I can feel how banging this shit was. All right. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Later.